Hi, Bobcats. In this video, we're going to work several examples of reaction stoichiometry calculations. Um, you can refer back to the previous video for the details of the process. Just a real quick review of the process is um, when we're looking at the problem, it should mention that you are doing a calculation that involves two different chemicals. Maybe you start with an amount of a reactant and it asks you to find how much of a product could be made. Or maybe if you want to create so much of a product, how much of a reactant do you need? But it'll be mentioning specifically two different chemicals. So when we start our dimensional analysis process, we will take the number we are given with its unit and its chemical, we'll write that down over one, and then we'll multiply by a conversion factor. When we build that conversion factor, we are going to put two numbers into it because um, we have two different chemicals involved. And so in the bottom of the conversion factor, we'll put a number from the radiation sign and a coefficient in the top of the conversion factor, we'll put a number from the radiation sign and a coefficient from the balanced equation. Our objective is to work more examples of reaction stoichiometry calculations. We first have to have a balanced equation. So the first thing we need to do after reading this problem is figure out how to rewrite that equation. So it says iron three oxide can be reduced to iron metal by heating it in hydrogen gas. Water is a byproduct of the reaction. How many formula units of iron three oxide are needed to make 100 grams of iron metal? So this word byproduct just means it's a product of the reaction, but it's not necessarily the one we're interested in. Um, and this will be a stoichiometry problem because we are given a number with iron as the chemical and we're asked to find a number where iron three oxide is the chemical. So this is a stoichiometry problem because we're changing chemicals. For our balanced equation, I think I'm going to write it up top. Iron three oxide is Fe2O3 and we're reacting it with hydrogen gas, which is a Brinkelhoff, so we have to put a two. We are going to make iron plus, whoops, iron is Fe, plus water, H2O. If we're gonna balance this, let's see. It looks like we're going to need a three in front of the water, which forces a three in front of the hydrogen and a two in front of the iron. Okay, so to start our calculation, we're going to take the 100 grams of iron and place 100 grams of iron over one. And now we're gonna multiply it. We need for um, the units to cancel out. So we've gotta put grams of iron on the bottom and the unit and chemical we are trying to find will go on top. It's asking how many formula units of iron three oxide are needed. So our unit is formula units and our chemical is Fe2O3, iron three oxide. Since we have two different chemicals, it is going to require two different numbers plugged in front in the top and in the bottom. When we look um, at the radiation side for formula units, formula units are a type of representative particle. So this will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. And then the second number is going to be the coefficient from the balanced equation, which is a one. For iron, when we look at the radiation sign, the number that goes with grams is the molar mass, and the molar mass for iron is 55.8. And the coefficient, which will be the second number on iron, is a two. So now we just need to run that through our calculator. We'll take 100 times 6.02 EE23 divided by 2 and divided by 55.8. And that gives us 5.39 times 10 to the 23rd. And let's see what happens with our units. We have grams of iron in the top and in the bottom, so they cancel out. That leaves formula units of Fe2O3. 
iron metal can react with chlorine gas to produce iron 3 chloride, how many moles of iron 3 chloride can be made from 15 liters of chlorine? So let's see, iron metal is reacting with chlorine gas. So chlorine's a Brinkelhoff. We have to put a subscript of 2 on it. They're going to make uh, iron 3 chloride, which is FeCl3. The question wants us to figure out how many moles of iron 3 chloride can be made if we start with 15 liters of chlorine. So the number, unit, and chemical are 15 liters of chlorine. We'll place that over one. So the bottom of my next step has to be liters of chlorine to make that cancel out. The top, we're going to put the unit and the chemical we're trying to find. We're trying to find moles, and the chemical we're trying to find is iron 3 chloride, or FeCl3. Since we have two different chemicals, FeCl3 and Cl2, we have to put two numbers in front um, in each part of our conversion. Um, when we look at the radiation sign, the part of the radiation sign that says moles has the number one. So we will put moles there. And on FeCl3, oh, you know what? Huh, I didn't balance our equation. So it looks like I'm gonna need to put a two in front of the FeCl3. That's gonna give us six chlorines on the right. So I'll put a three in front of chlorine on the left. And then I'm also gonna need a two in front of the iron. All right, now I have the correct coefficients. Um, on FeCl3, we have a coefficient of two. Down in the bottom where we have liters, on the radiation sign with liters, we have the number 22.4. And the coefficient on chlorine in the balanced equation is a three. When we look at our units, we have liters of chlorine in both the top and the bottom, so I'm gonna cancel those out. And the only unit that's left is FeCl3. So now if I run this through my calculator, I have 15 times two divided by three and divided by 22.4. And that's gonna give me a little under a half. It is 0.446 moles of FeCl3. Toluene and nitric acid are used in the production of trinitrotoluene, an explosive. What mass in grams of TNT can be prepared from 829 grams of toluene. Well, we're going to have to find the molar masses of these two chemicals because we're asked about grams for both of them. So I'm gonna do that up at the top because I'm gonna run out of room otherwise. So for toluene, for its molar mass, uh, let's see, toluene is C7H8. Uh, and the periodic table, well, let's see, we have seven carbons. The periodic table tells us carbon weighs 12. We have eight hydrogens, and the periodic table says one for each hydrogen. So if I take seven times 12 plus eight times one, we get 92 grams. So the molar mass for toluene is 92 grams. And then for trinitrotoluene, or TNT, we have the formula of C7H5N3O6. So boy, that's a little bit longer to calculate. We still have seven carbons at 12 apiece. We have five hydrogens this time and a mass of one. We have three nitrogens and a mass of 14, and we have six oxygens at a mass of 16. So let's see, let's run that all through the calculator. Seven times 12 plus five plus three times 14 plus six times 16. And that gives us a grand total of 227 grams for the molar mass for trinitrotoluene. All right, so now that we have that pre-calculated, since grams popped up, let's do our conversion. Our number is 829, our unit is grams, and our chemical is toluene. So 829 grams of toluene. And I'm going to place that over one. And then I know in the bottom of the next step, I need the unit and the chemical we're starting with. So grams of toluene. And in the top, we're going to place the unit and the chemical we're looking for. So that will be grams of TNT. 
Since we have two different chemicals, we need to fill in the conversion factor with two numbers in each slot. So on the top, we have TNT and grams. The radiation sign says for grams, we use the molar mass. So the molar mass of TNT was 227. The coefficient in the balanced equation in front of TNT is just a one. For the bottom, with toluene, for grams, the molar mass is 92. And then we need to look at the coefficient in the balanced equation, and that happens to be a one as well. Remember when we have a lot of ones, we don't need to type them into the calculator because multiplying and dividing by one doesn't change the value any. So this will be 829 times 227 divided by, whoops, <laughs> it would help if I turned my calculator on. Let's try that again. 829 times 227 divided by 92. And that gives us 2,000 45 grams of TNT. This problem uses the same chemical reaction from an earlier problem. We're going to have iron 3 oxide, or Fe2O3, reacting with hydrogen gas to make iron metal and water as a byproduct. And let's see, I think we needed to balance this. So we're going to need a three in front of the water to balance the oxygens. That's going to give us six hydrogens. So we'll put a three over here. And then we need to stick a two in front of the iron to balance that all out. All right, so this time around, we have 100 grams of iron that we're starting with. And we're trying to find how many moles of iron three oxide are needed. Let's start by writing down the number, the unit, and the chemical that we're given and placing that over one. Now we're going to multiply it by our conversion factor. The bottom of the conversion factor has to have a unit and a chemical that matches what we were given. So we'll put grams of iron down there. The top has the unit and the chemical we're trying to find. We're trying to find moles of Fe2O3. And um, since we have two different chemicals, we're going to have to put two different numbers into our conversion factor. So uh, when we look at the top part on the radiation sign, the number that goes with the word mole is 1. And then the number that goes in front of that is the coefficient from the balanced equation, which is also a 1. Down in the bottom, for grams of iron, we need to go to the periodic table and look up iron, which is 55.8. And then the second number is the coefficient from the balanced equation, which is a two. Okay, so we'll take 100, multiply it times one. So I'm not even gonna type that into the calculator. I'm gonna divide it by two, and I'm gonna divide it by 55.8. And my calculator is telling me that that will be 0.896 moles of Fe2O3. Now, just to kind of track down where some of these things were coming from, um, so the um, on our conversion factor, the numbers that are in the parentheses, like the one mole and the 55.8 grams, those are numbers off the radiation sign, and then the number out in front of that, the one in the top and the two in the bottom, those are our coefficients from the balanced equation. So for instance, whoops, I lost my pen. Um, the two is the coefficient in front of iron, and then this one is the coefficient in front of Fe2O3. Our objective was to work more examples of reaction stoichiometry calculations.